Welcome back everyone to another episode of Kaiju VFX, the show where we recreate your favorite tokusatsu special effects inside of Adobe After Effects. Today we are going to be recreating Biolante's Acid Sap Spray. Now I've seen this requested a couple times in the comments section of previous episodes, and I figured that, uh, you know, I've got the uh, semi-new Movie Monster series Biolante figure, so let's have a bit of fun and just recreate that Acid Sap Spray. So. I have our scene set up, Biolante is all animated, tentacles waving around, mouth opens to spray acid, all of that good stuff. The environment is built, looking pretty nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to recreate that effect where Biolante sort of has, I want to say, not lightning streaks, but a little electric bolts that, flum, that sort of flow from the center of her body to her mouth where that acid spray then condenses and sprays out. And then obviously we'll cover the actual acid sap itself. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and disable all of the layers that we don't need, all of the environment stuff, and we'll turn off the tentacles too just to save uh, the trouble of having to render those. And so we're just left with Biolante. So what I'm going to do to recreate that effect of the energy flowing through her body is I'm going to create a new solid and we'll call this energy beam. Hit enter. And I'm going to use a free third-party plugin um, like I use a lot in this series, Saber from Video Copilot. So we're going to add Saber. And right now we're going to just turn the uh, visual for that off. We're going to set it to screen and we're going to draw a quick mask real quick. Just something going from there and making it sort of flow, perhaps a little jagged like to the center of Biolante's mouth. And we'll re-enable that layer and we'll go into the customize core and set the core type to layer masks. And so we have this uh, energy beam now flowing from the center of her body to her mouth. And so what we're going to do is we're going to play around with the preset here and just uh, see if we can find something that kind of matches the look of the green lightning-ish sort of thing that we're going to go for. So I'm kind of a fan of the uh, core preset um, and I changed the color to sort of that um, greenish color that Biolante has and uh, I think this is going to be a decent starting point for this. We'll probably modify it a bit as we go but for now what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the uh, core settings and I'm going to change the start size to say maybe 7% just so uh, that beam is not having a just hard start in the middle of Biolante's body um, by decreasing the start size um, the beam sort of grows over time as it transcends her body and it makes it look a little bit more natural for our purposes. So looking at the effect in a preview here, um, we clearly need to mess around with the distortion a bit. So we're going to go into the core distortion first and we'll maybe turn up the amount of uh, core distortion just to get it to look a little bit more uh, wavy. And we will uh, increase the noise speed and perhaps the wind speed of it as well. And maybe the wind direction we'll play around with. Just get that looking nice. Yeah, I think that's a good speed. And we'll do something similar to the uh, glow distortion. We'll increase the wind speed and we'll have it move in the same direction as the core distortion. Increase the noise speed. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this. So this is a good start that we have going here, but obviously we need to animate this beam so that it flows through her body to her mouth and it isn't just stationary here because the mask isn't animated, which won't be a problem because we're going to have this flow through pretty quick that it won't be too noticeable. Um, so what we're going to do to do that, we're going to go to uh, the frame that we want the uh, thing to match up with her mouth on. And we're going to go into the customized core and we're going to keyframe the start offset and the end offset. We'll hit you and bring up those keyframes and what we'll do, we'll go back a couple of frames here and we'll set the end offset to zero. And uh, what that does is that brings the uh, end of the core to the starting point. And so now if we scrub through the timeline, we can see that at the first set of keyframes we set, um, the beam finishes flowing through her body to her mouth. And then we'll go a couple frames after that and we will bring the start offset up to 100 and that just uh, lets that flow through her body. So that's looking pretty pretty nice I would say. 
So obviously this just happens, you know, once, um, but we want it to happen more. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna trim this layer uh, to match the size of the keyframes that we set. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer a couple of times, uh, move them to separate parts of the timeline around here and manipulate the mask just so that we wind up with the beam going through Biollante's body a couple of times before she fires the beam. So I'm gonna take care of that real quick and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty decent. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, pre-compose all of these layers. So we'll hit pre-compose and we will uh, move all attributes and we'll just call this energy beams and uh, we'll set the blend mode to screen and uh, I'm just gonna play around with the uh, color correction a bit we'll add a glow maybe just uh, spread out that uh, green glow onto Biolante maybe we'll add an exposure and we'll boost that up a tiny bit maybe um, and we can enable our color grade layer here too just to see how it's going to uh, be affected when we have everything going on uh, in the final shot. And uh, I'd say it's looking pretty decent. Uh, I'm going for a bit of a stylized color with this shot, so I'm a little bit okay with this being a little bit overblown, but that depends on your personal preference and taste. All right, so obviously the next step is to make the actual acid sap spray. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new layer and we'll call this spray one. And we're going to add a CC particle world effect. And uh, we'll bring this below the body layer of Biolante. And I'm going to go into the physics here and I'm going to change the animation type to fire. And so what we're going to do, we're going to go into the extras tab down here and we're going to crank up the rotation Z until we get this in a good position where it looks like it's coming from Biolante's mouth. And uh, I'm going to play around with the radius X, Y, and Z just to find something that uh, looks pretty thin. And uh, we'll turn down the velocity perhaps a little bit as well, bring it pretty close to zero. And so what we wanna do is I wanna animate this spray so that it moves with Biolante's mouth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to the first frame and we're gonna keyframe the position X and Y. Um, no need for Z because we're not messing with it in 3D space. And we're just going to go through and uh, roughly animate where the particles should be coming from with Biolante's mouth. Okay, uh, pretty rough, but you know, it is what it is. Um, just for the sake of this tutorial, that's just how I do it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go toward the end and I'm going to keyframe the birth rate to kind of slowly come down to zero. Uh, maybe we'll go a little bit quicker and a little bit sooner. Maybe a little bit slower, just so we get something that looks like it's dissipating as it comes from our mouth, like it's it's squirting out that last little bit of juice. Okay, so I want to add a bit of gravity to this effect. Um, now we are dealing with CC Particle World, which is honestly a pretty primitive particle system for After Effects, so it can be a bit difficult to get the right look since we're not um, using paid third-party plugins like Trap Code Particular or Superluminal Stardust, stuff that I would usually use. Um, so we're going to have to do a little bit of trickery in order to get some gravity going to this because um, the way that we have rotated this is we rotated the effect camera of the beam, which is not rotating the actual emitter itself, but rather the camera in which the layer is observing the particle simulation. So if you see we uh, up the gravity, it acts like... Um, the effect is still looking at it from a straight on view and not rotated at all. So the way that we can work around this a little bit is uh, we can go into the gravity vector tab in the physics tab and uh, we can affect the gravity by dimension. So we can add more or less gravity in the X, Y, and Z dimensions if we want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of gravity in the X. 
Not a whole lot, but enough to make it noticeable. Okay, so I turned down the birth rate to about 0.1, just so we get this uh, really fine little stream of acid particles coming out of her mouth. And what we might do is we might up the velocity a bit just so that we're getting a little bit of a wider streak of those as they go out. Um, and uh, we're gonna go into the particle settings here. Uh, we'll change the max opacity to 100%, and uh, the birth color we'll set to a very light green, and the death color um, doesn't matter too much because we're not seeing these particles die on screen, but we'll make it just a darker, less saturated green. And we'll set the blend mode to add. Uh, maybe we'll go in and we'll desaturate um, this birth color a little bit. Maybe we'll make it a little bit more green yellowish. And uh, we'll do the same for the death color. Just make it a dark green yellow. So what I'm gonna do on this layer Okay, so we've got the base layer of acid spray particles going on here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna really layer the hell out of these particles. Um, so to start off, we're gonna duplicate that layer. And uh, I'm gonna go into the particle tab here and change the type to faded spheres. And uh, we'll play around with the birth rate a little bit maybe. Nothing too much something like that maybe and uh, we'll set the size variation to 100 and we'll uh, decrease the we'll decrease the death size just a tiny bit maybe increase the birth size now for these I kind of want these to be like uh, flickering little acid particles or something in the spray kind of like there is in the movie um, so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna go into the opacity map here and uh, we're just going to uh, scribble a little bit. Just uh, make this look as jagged as we can and just get something that is totally wild and crazy that will affect the opacity of these particles super randomly over the course of their life cycle. So next I'm gonna duplicate that layer uh, I'm gonna go in the extras real quick and add a random seed just so that it looks a little bit different. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to up the birth rate of these particles to quite a lot. I'm gonna go into the particle settings and change the depth size to be much bigger. Um, I'm gonna add a vector blur to this layer. And this is gonna sort of serve as the uh, base, so to say, of our uh, particle spray. Sort of like a cloud of acid, if you will. And uh, that vector blur cuts off a little bit on the side there, just because of the way it um, affects the particles. So I'm gonna add a motion tile after the particle world effect. And we'll uh, mirror the output height and width. And now that looks fine. And then I'm gonna add a fast box blur up it to maybe three. And uh, maybe I will increase the velocity a little bit. And we'll just see how this looks. Okay, that's not looking too bad in my opinion. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up the gravity on that, just so it's being pulled forward a little bit faster. I'm also gonna just straight up lower the opacity on it so it's not coming through as strongly. Up the box blur a little bit. Change the color maybe to a uh, more desaturated looking green. And uh, on that note, I'm gonna go back into that um, sort of spherical uh, particle thing that we were making, and I'm gonna change those to be more of a yellowish color, just as a little side thing. All right, looking at this with the color grade layer on, it is not looking too bad so far. Um, I'm gonna add another layer to these. I'm gonna go into the, uh, the spherical sort of particle thing that we made, duplicate it again, go into the extras, change the random seed up, I'm going to go into the uh, particle tab and I'm going to change the type to bubble. And uh, I'm going to go in and lower the birth rate a tiny bit, increase the longevity. And this is going to sort of be an extension of those uh, little glittering acid things that we were making before. Maybe we'll up the birth rate again and increase the velocity.
Let's see how that looks. Okay, so looking at this now, I've got just about all the layers that I think that I would want on this acid spray. Um, as I said, we are dealing with a rather primitive particle system, so it is difficult to get the exact look that you probably would want to get out of this. Um, but still, we have created something that looks pretty cool, I think, given the uh, very basic particle system that comes with After Effects. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, go through these one by one and um, add some effects to them. They might be glows, they might be blurs, all that kind of fun stuff, and uh, just see how uh, else we can affect all of these particles. And uh, this can be sort of left up to your own discretion. Um, but just to save time here, I'm going to go through these on my own, uh, because you can probably experiment with this with yourself. And I will get back to you guys after I have done all that. All right, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut all these layers off at that point where we don't need them anymore. And so now we've got Biolante building up that uh, acid charge through uh, the beams going through her body and then spitting all that out onto her opponent, which is probably Godzilla. So I'm gonna leave that off here. You are totally free to experiment with this and I fully encourage that you do. See what kind of results you can get by messing with different effects and particle systems and all that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, hopefully you found this helpful if you want to create Biolante's acid spray for your own fan films or what have you. But yeah, I'm going to end this off here before it gets too long. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys here next time with whatever it is that I have to offer. I would like to give a special thank you to Patreon supporters Justice, Liquid Pestar, GWR Zilla, Jimmy Moore, Jeff King, Johnny Sacco, Jaws Infinity, and a very special thank you to Ultriab. If you would like to learn how you can get your name listed at the end of each of my videos as well, in addition to some other awesome rewards, then be sure to visit patreon.com slash daikaiju legends.